Brought to you by... There is nothing quite as satisfying and that delivers a sense of finality, like watching heads roll on screen. At every strike, it forces the thought into your minds that there is no coming back from that. Which is why today we are playing Executioner and tackling some of the most memorable decapitations ever put to screen. Jason Voorhees has taken far more than his share of lives over the course of his camp stalking career, with many varieties of decapitations among the bunch. This spatial outing makes the cut due to its over-the-top nature, seeing the newly upgraded Android KM mow down our titular slasher with a machine gun before blowing his head to smithereens with a well-placed rocket shot. Granted, her actions only lead to a much bigger and badder killer being reborn, but we're gonna ignore that for the time being. Jason takes two slots on today's list, stealing number 9 with a boxing match on a nondescript rooftop that ends with Jason delivering a swift right hook, sending a young man's head spiraling over the edge to a trashy grave. You have to admit that Herbert West has made a few mistakes over the course of his experimentation into the prevention of brain death. However, by far his worst was the crime of passion he committed while murdering and decapitating Dr. Hill with a shovel. This one makes our list given that it delivered us one of the most unique incarnations of a movie villain to date as a talking head in a dish. Coming in at number 7 is, of course, David Fincher's gritty noir masterpiece that places detectives Mills and Somerset on the trail of a sadistic killer who is modeling his murders after the seven deadly sins. This one gatecrashes our list due to the pure shock value. Despite never showing us the actual decapitation on screen, or even the severed head for that matter, the implication of what John Doe has done is enough to leave you absolutely floored. Though the original Stalk and Slash at Camp Crystal Lake isn't known these days for its more gory moments, Mrs. Voorhees' seminal romp does reach its climactic finale when she's pitted against the machete swing of our final girl, culminating in a slow-mo decapitation that still stands today as one of the greats, thanks to the efforts of legendary Tom Savini. While the most recent on our list, 2018's Hereditary treated us to one of the most unexpected and brutal decapitations to date, planting us into the trauma of Peter as he races his young sister toward the hospital, swerving to avoid a dead deer in the road, inadvertently driving his sister Charlie face first into a telephone post. With this one, it isn't so much the moment that drives it home, but the aftermath in which we linger with Peter as he is unable to cope with what just happened. In Sam Raimi's legendary classic, we get the second shovel decap to hit our list as Bruce Campbell's Ash is violently attacked by the possessed Linda outside the cabin. Before he's able to get in, a lucky shovel swing, knocking her head free from her shoulders, sending her head crashing into the dirt, and her body dropping on top of him only to provide him with a writhing crimson bloodbath. In Toby Hooper's follow-up to his infamous backwoods slasher, he wastes no time in thrusting us into the violence, carving out his name deep into the annals of horror history by seeing Leatherface wearing a corpse in front of him, of all things, viciously attacking a couple of guys in a car. He winds up chainsawing their roof to shreds before sawing off a piece of the driver's dome piece. While not technically a full decapitation, it makes the list on sheer insanity and gore factor. Coming in at number 2, due to the pure impact of the moment, we get the no-bullshit climax of Halloween H2O, in which after 20 years of mayhem, Michael Myers meets his violent end at the hand of his sister Lori Strode, having him pinned to a tree and brutally decapitated with an axe. This was a climax that felt perfectly definitive and absolutely satisfying. 
While not the most violent or gory to hit our list, this one takes the number one spot based purely on volume. Never before this or even since have I personally seen more on-screen decapitations put on display. Mostly through the use of CG augmentation, director Tim Burton plays with the Legend of the Headless Horseman and Ichabod Crane by aiming for more head rolls than any film before, even going so far as to state that in the film's tagline. But that's all for today, friends. Be sure to tune in next week for another Top 10 Tuesday. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give us a thumbs up. If you want to show your support, please consider checking us out on Patreon or Tippy, where for as little as $1 a month, you can open up the doors to a wide range of rewards and help us keep fresh content coming your way. As always, feel free to leave your thoughts down below. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will catch you all next time. Thanks for watching.